it's important to recognize that the biotechnology industry is essentially built on top of the pharmaceutical industry. While the applications could have been in any area, a drug was the first opportunity targeted. The reason for this is that pharmaceuticals have high margins and can generally be assured of sales if they can deliver a useful product. By filling a substantial market need, Genentech was able to develop the first biotechnology drug. Before I go into the emergence of biotechnology, I'd like to take a step back and explain how the pharmaceutical industry developed. There was a time when medical science was based on superstition and on principles not based on science. A common technique was bloodletting, in which it was believed that sick patients had too much blood, so surgeons would set about bleeding patients. Clearly this was not very effective. As medical science advanced, there was a focus on symptom-based treatment. This is how aspirin was developed. It was known that sodium salicylate was effective against arthritis, but the father of aspirin's inventor, Felix Hoffman, couldn't stand the acid. So Hoffman set out to find a less acidic formula and eventually produced acetyl salicylic acid, or aspirin. In another example, penicillin was developed as a human antibiotic based on the observation that it could prevent bacterial growth in laboratory experiments, a clear example of science leading to a medical treatment. In a sense, biotechnology is a continuation of the science which led to the pharmaceutical industry. However, there are some important distinctions between biotechnology and pharmaceutics. Because biotechnology is based on molecular biology, it enables investigations and manipulations at a far more fundamental level. I'll be covering these in videos on molecular biology and on drug development. To give you a general idea of the differences, consider the sources of pharmaceutical and biotechnology drugs. Common sources for pharmaceutical drugs are biological extracts, dyes, and organic and synthetic chemical mixtures. Biotechnology, by contrast, enables the directed biological synthesis of natural and synthetic compounds. I realize this is very technical, so I'll illustrate with some examples. Consider the case of Taxol, a traditional pharmaceutical drug. It is discovered that Taxol interferes with structural proteins, which has the effect of preventing cell division. I highlighted the word interfere because that is a keyword for pharmaceutical drugs. They often interfere with biological processes. Because cancer cells grow rapidly, a drug that can block cell growth is a candidate to control cancer. The issue with Taxol, as a biological extract, is that it is only available from an endangered species of slow-growing trees. So this creates a problem. Do you sacrifice the trees to save or extend a few lives? Even if you do, you'll soon run out of trees. And because they grow slowly, it's not possible to establish a sustainable way to farm them. So to solve the problem, pharmaceutical scientists used one of the tools at their disposal, synthetic synthesis. Instead of harvesting the drug from trees, would it be great if you could mix some chemicals in a flask and produce the drug? Unfortunately, Taxol is very difficult to make. So despite the fact that three methods to produce a drug synthetically were discovered, none of them are economically efficient. Instead, there was a compromise. Scientists used Taxol precursors, which they could extract from the needles of yew trees, a renewable resource, and then chemically converted those precursors into Taxol. This example illustrates the tool used for pharmaceutical drug development and their limitations. By contrast, how do biotechnology companies produce drugs? The upcoming video on the application of biotechnology includes the first biotechnology drug but I'll give you a teaser for now. Biotechnology companies were formed to use molecular biology tools, which enabled them to directly manipulate biological systems. The first biological drug was recombinant human insulin, which was produced in bacteria. The previous source was extraction of pig insulin from pigs. This pig insulin had problems because some people would reject it because it wasn't identical to human insulin, and there were also shortages and concerns over disease transmission. By isolating the gene for human insulin and producing it in bacteria and then later in yeast, it was possible to get a stable supply of the human version of insulin. And so you see the difference between Taxol, in which you're limited to what you can extract or make with chemicals, 
and biotechnology, which allows you to extract a gene, the human version of a gene, and directly replace a missing element through fermentation in bacteria or in yeast.